Hey guys, uh, before the video starts, I figured I'd say a few words just to clarify something. Now I'm going to be talking about survival kit items. Now these are not everyday use items. These are not things that are going to make you a better woodsman. They're not made to use every single time you go out. These are things that are made to stow away in your pack to be lightweight, simple items, easy to use for times when you may have a real life and death emergency. So with that in mind, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so as you can see the bow drill method of fire lighting actually does work. And it can work pretty well. Now you guys have seen me make bow drill fires before. It's nothing new for me. But I'm not going to lie, that had a really good chance of failure. In fact, I actually intended for it to fail. You see, I made this kit a couple days ago and I left it out here in the woods. Whenever I came out here this morning, it was below freezing, everything had a hard frost on it, and my tinder bundle, my hearth board, my spindle, everything was wet. The original idea for the video was that I was going to pretend like I was going to do a regular bow drill fire lighting video, and I was going to get a lot of smoke, and it just wasn't going to come together. And in a fit of frustration, I was going to throw everything down and say, it's just not going to work this time. Now. That was going to be the segue into today's topic of conversation. 
uh, but it ended up working. <laughs> Nobody was more surprised than me. Now what you guys didn't see is that was actually my third attempt. Uh, you can see my failed notches there. This one actually split out. That was my first one. Um, that kind of does fit in with the topic of conversation and that is it's not a good idea to rely on primitive fire lighting methods when you could be in a real survival situation. You want to carry real world fire lighting methods because even though this may work consistently under ideal conditions, survival situations rarely happen under ideal conditions. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys some of the methods that I carry for fire lighting in my pack. Stay tuned. Alright guys, they say you should carry at least three methods of lighting a fire in your survival kit. Now I'm no different. Now for most people, that's going to be a lighter, matches, some type of ferro rod. Now you should always carry some type of tinder with you as well. Now tinder could be a lot of things. One of the things I always carry, for obvious reasons, is a multi-use item. Toilet paper. <laughs> now in addition to helping you out while you're making your mystical evolution, we all know this makes a pretty good tender as long as it's dry, huh? It doesn't take much. And if all you have is your lighter, it works pretty good. That wasn't so hard. <laughs> so your lighter is probably going to be your go-to in a real survival situation. But the thing is, if the wick inside that lighter gets wet or you run out of fluid, uh, it's not going to work. So you want to have something else. Now my something else is the UCO Stormproof Matches. Now you guys have seen these in one of my other videos too. These have a cool waterproof container and it's a nice bright color so you can find it when you need it. And inside, you get these cool stormproof matches. And these work really good. In fact, uh, you can actually strike this, light it up, dip it in water, submerge it, pull it back out and it will reignite. And I showed that in one of my previous videos. Uh, that was the video on the best homemade fire starters that I found, or something to that effect. If that's the wrong title, I'll put the correct title down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but anyways, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a little striker here on the back. And once it gets going, these things burn really hot. And again, once you get it lit, it doesn't matter if it gets wet. It'll keep going. But, sometimes that's just not enough. Sometimes you're going to run into something else that uh, requires a different method of fire lighting. And usually, that last method of lighting a fire is going to be some type of Phariseum rod. Now you guys have seen me use a magnesium fire starter before, uh, but for my survival kit here, I only carry the best. And the best that I've found for real world survival situations is this. This is the UST Blast Match. Now these have been used by the military for air crews and, and other people who may find themselves in a survival situation. And the way this works, you have a little striker that you hold with your thumb and you push down on the ferro rod and it sparks. Now the benefit to using one of these over a regular magnesium fire starter is that you can use this one handed. Now that may be important if your other hand is injured. These work really well, which is why I carry it. As far as fire tender goes, now you saw in a previous video 
I made the best homemade fire starters that I found. But there is actually a commercially available fire starter that actually beats those out. And when I need real world survival stuff, I go with the best that I well the best that I can find. This is the UST wet fire fire starting tender. This stuff is pretty amazing. See, it's easy to light, and you can actually take this, completely dunk it in water, pull it back out, and it'll light. In fact, you can float one of these cubes in water and light the top of it, and it'll keep on burning. That's pretty amazing. As long as there is some oxygen that this thing can get to to combust, it's going to light. Now the way this stuff works, I'm going to take the cube out, you see it looks like a little uh, salt cube. I'm just going to shave a little bit off. Just kind of break up a few little pieces here. This just makes it easier to light with a ferrocium rod. If you're lighting with a lighter, you don't even have to do this. We take our blast match. There you go. It's as easy as that. I like these because they give you a nice tall flame. They last for a good long time. You get about 10 minutes of burn time out of one of these. Now the reason you want a nice tall flame is because if you have wet wood to work with, you're going to have your fire lay and you want those flames to start coming up through as much of the wood as you can possibly get to dry that wood out so that it'll burn. You see it doesn't take long for this to have a pretty good sized flame. Alright, so just in case you guys were wondering, how well this actually works with natural materials. This is a type of reed that grows out here. That's an invasive species. But the down on top of it kind of works the same way as cattail down. So I'm going to see how well the blast match ignites this. There you go, it does ignite. That worked pretty well. So, this is a handy thing to have. And when all else fails, I know I can count on this. So just one last thing. Some people that have used these for a long time say that eventually that spring's going to wear out. Sometimes these do break. But if it does, you just use it like any other ferro rod. It still throws a good spark. You see, you don't actually need that striker there for this to be an effective survival tool. But these are really good to have. You always want to carry some good fire tender with you. Some good methods of lighting that tender in the hopes that you never have to resort to this. Because <laughs> if everything else fails, the chances of you getting something like this to work are pretty slim. Alright guys, that's been my time for today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. It's free. <laughs> and uh, until next time, guys. Thumbs up.